Hi everyone! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my final part to my Midwest fragrance haul. And today is going to be unboxing and giving you um, my out of the bottle first impressions of seven different fragrances. Um, and so we have Dark Amber, Rosewood, Chestnut and Birch, Pike's Peak, Grapefruit and Mint, apple cider donut, cedar, musk, and lavender, and espresso. So if this is something that you're interested in, then consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business related content and fragrance videos. If you all haven't realized by now, I'm a little bit obsessed with fragrances and proud. Um, but anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope you enjoy. So I don't know where I want to start today. Um, there are several of these oils that I am so excited to try and I've been kind of saving them um, for this video in particular. Um, the lavender, cedar musk and lavender and the dark amber rosewood, I am just kind of dying to try. A lot of you have recommended those oils as well. Um, so I don't know, should we start there? Um, or should we start with, you know, let's start with this espresso oil. So my favorite espresso scent, as most of you know, is espresso by Brambleberry and I'm all out of the oil right now. By the way, I am going to be making a new order um, with Brambleberry soon and I've already ordered from that company. I love Brambleberry in general and some people have said that they are a soap company. Yes. And they're also a candle company. Um, and they also post like, um, the strength of each of their fragrances in their candles. They're entirely phthalate free and I've had very good luck with their fragrances throwing in my 464 candles really well in general. I don't think I really had any duds from Brambleberry and the only other company I can say that about um, as a whole is 1617. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. Um, so it's going to be hard um, as well to please me with, with this espresso, um, with any espresso after I've smelled that one because it's literally perfect and it um, performs really well in cold process soap. So, you know, it's gonna be very hard to top that one. Um, but I'm seeing, you know, maybe this is a more affordable option for some people. Um, Brambleberry is a little bit more expensive, but I would argue that it's a very good, um, you're, you're getting a very good price point for the quality. Um, so anyways, let's check out this espresso fragrance and see what it's gonna do for us. Mmm. Okay. This this reminds me of Fresh Coffee by Candle Science. I'm gonna put this one on a strip here. Actually, I'm gonna go grab Fresh Coffee by Candle Science and then I'm gonna put this one on a strip to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I grabbed Fresh Coffee and this is a scent where you can literally smell, um, my customers have told me that they can literally smell the scent right when they open their um, package like before they've even opened the candle, they can smell espresso or espresso fresh coffee by Candle Science. So I just wanted to compare this because this espresso fragrance by uh, Midwest is initially out of the bottle, reminding me more of fresh coffee rather than espresso. But I mean, gosh, the Brambleberry one is just so luxe. It's just, exquisite and that's the only fragrance that I can say is a true espresso that I have smelled. I smell a lot of good coffee fragrances but espresso is not the same as coffee and I am part Italian so um yeah there's a difference. So this is the um wait a second which one is which here? No the one on the left I can't even Wow. Yeah, the, this, this one on the right is the, the one on your left is the Espresso by Midwest. And, oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face with the blotter strip again. So, the Espresso by Midwest and the Fresh Coffee by Candle Science are virtually identical twins. Um, They're virtually identical twins. If you're looking for a really true to life, fresh coffee ground fragrance, like without anything else, but just like dark roast coffee, 
I think you would like either of these oils. Now I can't speak to how the one from Midwest performs in a candle. I can say the, the Fresh Coffee by Candle Science is really, 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 really strong in 464, but it does not, um, you cannot use it in cold process soap. And um, the, the Midwest Espresso, um, I don't know either. Oh yeah, category nine, which would be cold process soap. You can use a max of 15%. So that is something to be aware of if you're looking for a fresh coffee that is um, less expensive than the Brambleberry, which, which is really espresso. Um, <laughs> I would recommend checking out the Espresso by Midwest if you're looking for a coffee fragrance that is less expensive that you can use in cold process soap. That's actually a really good find, I think. Um, for that particular application. So next up, what should we do? Should we check out, let's check out the chestnut and birch. So as I mentioned in my last video, I am really, 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 like I have a strong affinity for birch fragrances. I've tried birch and black pepper. I've tried vanilla birch. I have tried um, white birch by Candle Science. The birch and black pepper and vanilla birch are by Flaming Candle. I feel like there's a couple of other ones. Oh, Cracklin' Birch by Nature's Garden and the one by Midwest, which are, like identical twins. Um, yeah, so let's see what this chestnut and birch is gonna do. I really hope that it's a nutty, kind of woody, just beautiful um, fall and winter aesthetic, kind of luxe or more high end, I'm hoping. Mmm, wow. Okay, it's light though, out of the bottle. This is, I wanna like this, but it's beautiful, but I'm also getting like a very light version of um, the one that I smelled in my last video. Let me, let me grab it. It's the honey, the, the bourbon one, the French bourbon reserve that I love so much. Let me just see here. Yeah, the French bourbon reserve. It's reminding me of that fragrance, but lighter, and I'm surprised at that. They'd be so similar. Yeah, the French Bourbon Reserve says it's a Midwest Fragrance Company original. Mmm. Okay, and then, yeah, that was the French Bourbon Reserve. And then this is, mm, okay, yeah. Wow. They smell virtually identical. Holy cow. There's a little bit more nuttiness to the chestnut and birch, but not very much. I'm mostly getting birch, but it, it's more... I'm gonna do this again, just in case I mixed up these strips or something. Um, okay, so this is the... French Bourbon Reserve. I just want to make sure that I did not double dip something or mix anything up here. So on your right, I have the French Bourbon Reserve by Midwest. And on your left, which would be my right, um, I'm gonna have the Chestnut and Birch by Midwest here. So this one on your right is, again, the French Bourbon Preserve. <sighs> one of my favorite oils that I've smelled out of the bottle of all time. And then this one is the, um, the Chestnut Birch. Yeah, wow. Well, if you ever have one of those oils that's out of stock, um, you've got a substitute from the same company. But I would say that the French Bourbon Reserve, the main difference that I detect is that it's stronger out of the bottle. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It smells, like I said in my last video, more like Vanilla Bean Noel than Vanilla Bean Noel ever was Vanilla Bean Noel by Bath & Body Works. Mm. Just gorgeous, gorgeous oils. My hope is that they smell exactly like they do out of the bottle when I make them into candles. So next up, what should we do? Should we try, ooh, okay, let's do, 
Let's take a break from the fall ones and let's try this grapefruit and mint. I'm really hoping that this is something like Aveda-esque. Um, like, I'm gonna put this French or fresh coffee down. Um, I'm hoping that this is something Aveda-esque. Like spa-like, aromatherapy-like. I always love mint when it's blended with like grapefruit or like some sort of a fruit type of a note. Even cucumber melon, like when you take a vegetable like cucumber or like something kind of a spa-like vegetable and blend it with a fruity note, you can get such a beautiful kind of aromatherapy um, combination. So I, I just hope, and I'm a little concerned, I'm just hoping that this does not smell like a gummy bear. And the reason I'm concerned is because some of the other fruity fragrances that I've smelled from this company have been like that, um, at least like in my last few videos you can watch back. Um, so, I don't know. Let's see what this grapefruit and mint is gonna do for us. Mmm, oh my goodness. I'm not getting a lot of mint. I'm getting a beautiful, wow, I would say a beautiful, true to life, authentic grapefruit. Wow. Not like a gummy bear. Wow, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, true to life grapefruit. And you can use this in cold process soap as well. Category nine has a max usage of 14%. And I really like how Midwest puts that right on their bottles. Just for any of you who make cold process soaps, I know we have some soap makers in our community on this channel. Um, I think that that's really nice information to have. I do wish I picked up a little bit more of the mint, but I might try mixing this with Garden Mint by Candle Science, for example. Um, you can always do that if you want to bring out more of one component, just mix it, you know? And um, but yeah, this is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous true to life, um, strong, true to life grapefruit. Wow, blown away. All right, next, let's check out Pike's Peak. So one of you recommended this and I have no idea what to expect. This is another scent that I totally would not have purchased because the name, like it just, it doesn't really, um, it, it just doesn't really allure me. Um, I'm not trying to be offensive. It, it just, it doesn't really allure me. That means nothing though. And this is also a Midwest Fragrance Company original. So I don't know, I kind of have liked a lot of their original scents. So I'm hoping that this one is something maybe woody, earthy, maybe snow-like, mountain-like, nature-like. Um, I don't know. Let's see what Pike's Peak is gonna do for us. If you recommended the scent, thank you so much for your recommendation and leave me a comment down below. Um, and I hope you don't let me down. Ooh, yeah, okay, this is, this is the sister to, um, where is it, Iced Vanilla Woods, is that what it's called? Where did it go? There it is. Yeah, this is the sister to Iced Vanilla Woods, um, wow. All right, I'm gonna have to put both of these on a strip. So the one on your right here is Pike's Peak. And then the one here that's on your left, my right, is Iced Vanilla Woods. And Iced Vanilla Woods is one of the most gorgeous and cohesive fragrances that I have ever smelled. Oh. But startlingly, Pike's Peak is quite similar to it. I would have to say I like Ice Vanilla Woods more because you get more of the androgynous quality, whereas Pike's Peak I would consider a little bit more masculine. Um, it's earthy, like it's it's definitely an elevated mahogany and teak wood type of a scent, and it's along the same lines of Ice Vanilla Woods. But I feel like if you already have Ice Vanilla Woods in your line, which is what I'm gonna have in my line, um, I would not have Pike's Peak as well. Um, it's beautiful though. Woody, earthy. Um, it's got a little bit more of like a um, a spruce or a pine note to it than the Ice Vanilla Woods does and a little bit less of a um, snow element 
than the Ice Vanilla Woods. The Ice Vanilla Woods, you get something that's a little bit cozier and sweeter, whereas the Pikes Peak is a little bit more uh, camphor, a little bit more um, pine, pinion, pine, earthy, um, but in a wintry, mountain-like way. Uh, if that makes any sense. And the more it dries down, the more pine notes, like a pinion pine. If you've tried pinion pine by Candles and Supplies, Fraser Fir by Candle Science, um, it, it has a lot of those notes in it, but it also combines them in a more um, kind of cologne-like, a little bit way, sort of like a mahogany antique wood. So we're down to the last three oils and they're all really exciting ones. All right, let's take a look at, let's let's do this apple cider donut really quick because the other two are more like spa, I think, like the dark amber rosewood and the cedar musk and lavender. I feel like they're gonna be more spa aromatherapy. So I wanna do this gourmand one first and then end with the, the ones I'm absolutely most excited about. Um, <laughs> admittedly, admittedly, um, Nick, if you're watching this, um, Nick with the 1994 Candle Co. I bought this scent because when you launched your fall line, you had the most adorable picture of a candle with, that was called apple cider donut, I believe. And um, I was wondering what oil you used in your candle. And I don't know if you used the one by Midwest, but when I saw that they had a fragrance called apple cider donut, it reminded me of the gorgeous photo that you had of your candle. Um, Top-notch photography, by the way, um, Nick. And so anyways, that's why I had to get this scent. By the way, I have an apple cider candle in my fall line, which is Apple Harvest by Candle Science, but it is not, um, it doesn't have the donut aesthetic. So I'm just curious what, cause donut to me is more of like a bread kind of a note. And I feel like that's very hard. Um, I think the most bread-like fragrances I've tried would be Sugar Cookie by CandlesAndSupplies.com as well as um, Artisan Bread by Nature's Garden as well as Snickerdoodle by Candle Science and I blend that one with the Flaming Candle Snickerdoodle because that brings in the spice components. Anyway, I digress. Let's check out this Apple Cider Donut by Midwest and see what it's going to do for us. Mmm. Wow. It's lighter though than I would, oops, as I drip on my shirt here. Hang on a second, you guys. I gotta take care of this really quick. Give me one minute. So I think that this apple cider donut, it has a beautiful oh, like Macintosh apple to it, but it's also got, I'm getting a lot of like, like if you were to blend Candle Scientist Macintosh apple with their snickerdoodle, I feel like you get pretty close to this apple cider donut. And, but I mean, if this throws well, I would, I would just go with this. It's really, really, really well done. I just wish it were a little bit stronger out of the bottle. Um, it does also have a category nine max of 9.24%. Uh, so you can use quite a bit of that in your cold process soaps. Um, wow, I am just, I keep going back to this one. Um, have any of you tried this? Do any of you know how it throws in, in 464? Um, very, very curious. And I look forward to making this one into a candle um, in the future. We are down to the very last two oils and I am just, I don't know, should we do, should we do the dark amber and rosewood? Let's do the dark amber and rosewood and we'll end with the cedar musk and lavender. Okay, so some of you that did not like Midwest as much were saying that their dark amber and rosewood is the one scent that Midwest has that they that you do kind of like. And this is also a Midwest Fragrance Co. original. You all know that amber is one of my all-time favorite notes in fragrances. I have a whole video on my favorite amber fragrances that I'm gonna try to link above if editing Alan can remember. Um, when I'm when I'm editing this to, to put the the link in on the YouTube um, but yeah oh my gosh I don't know rosewood is such a beautiful note too nature's garden has a beautiful rosewood fragrance um, but it's I think it's a sandal sandalwood and rosewood um, I'll put the correct name up on the screen but um, yeah amber and rosewood sounds like it could lean really kind of high-end and I don't know 
let's see what this one is gonna do for us. Dark Amber and Rosewood by Midwest. Here we go. Mmm. Yeah, definitely something that I think leans more high end. Okay. I'm surprised though at how this is coming out of the bottle. To me, pretty light. Maybe not, it just depends on how I'm kind of turning the strip. But yeah, it's definitely very like perfume-esque. I wouldn't say cologne-esque, I'd say like a perfume-esque. But more of a unisex type of a scent. Like, I feel like a guy could wear this as well. Um, yeah, I'm loving it, but I'm not, I'm not totally loving it. There's, there's sort of an alcoholic note in this that smells sort of like isopropyl alcohol and I don't really know what to say about that, but I'm thinking it could be just because I'm smelling this out of the bottle and it's very, very concentrated out of the bottle. So I'm gonna have to make this one into a candle and see, but I'm definitely getting more of a rose note to this. And sometimes with rosewood fragrances, like the one from Nature's Garden, it doesn't smell like rose. It's rosewood is not, it, it doesn't really smell like rose in general. I think this one does have some rose in it though, as well as like dark amber and gosh, this almost reminds me of um, Nature's Garden Amber Waters, which is like a, almost like a black amber type of a scent. Um, I, I think I sell that one in my French collection as my Ombre d'Or. Um, I think I call it Golden Amber, but I think you more accurately, if you wanted to use French, could call that one Ombre Del Mar um, or something. But yeah, this, this is really, um, along the lines of that one by Nature's Garden, I would say. Um, and I do wish the Nature's Garden one would throw better as well in 464. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm impressed, I guess, I would say, with this one. Like, it's, it's definitely like a solid six out of 10 for me, which, you know, like that's not bad. So the very last one for this haul is Cedar Musk and Lavender. Cedar, musk, and lavender. Everything about that sounds dusky, Twilight Woods-esque, into the night-esque. Like, just like um, Moonflower Nectar by Candle Science or Magic in the Air maybe by um, Bath and Body Works. And there's a wonderful dupe that Aztec does of that scent, um, by the way. Yeah, this almost reminds me of maybe Moonlight Path by Bath and Body Works or Stormwatch even. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like a mysterious component, an aromatherapy component, an earthy component, a musky kind of upscale cologne component. So let's see what Cedar Musk and Lavender is gonna do for us. This fragrance is also very highly rated on Midwest uh, Fragrance Company's website. So very last one here, and I have so patiently waited to smell this until the very end of this video, which has taken me several days of filming. So. Don't let me down, Midwest. Mmm. Okay. This isn't gonna let me down, but this almost smells to a T like Mahogany and Teakwood by the Flaming Candle. And now I gotta go find that scent. Like when Mahogany and Teakwood is burning, it smells just like this when the cedar, musk, and lavender smells out of the bottle, just like when Mahogany and Teakwood by the Flaming Candle, which is my favorite Mahogany and Teakwood fragrance, by the way, it smells just like that fragrance um, when it's burning. So let me just go look for that one, see if I can find it. So here is the Mahogany and Teakwood, which by the way, is one of the fragrances I usually use um, in addition to Cashmere Plum by Candle Science when I test, um, when I test new waxes or wicks or whatever. Oops, I'm dripping this one down the bottle. Okay, so on your right, we have Mahogany and Teakwood by the Flaming Candle. Mmm, yeah. And then on your left, we have Cedar Musk and Lavender by Midwest. If this is not the same fragrance, I don't know what else to say. Like, 
they're identical. I mean, to me personally, they are identical twins. So if you ever run out of <laughs> the cedar musk and lavender, just check out Mahogany and Teakwood by the Flaming Candle. Or if you ever run out of Mahogany and Teakwood by the Flaming Candle, you know, you might be able to pick up a bottle of cedar musk and lavender. And also, if you're just ordering, a lot of people order from multiple suppliers. You know, it's sometimes good to know if they perform the same way in a candle that you can always, you don't have to make that special order for just one cent from, you know, a supplier. Um, but yeah, <laughs> gorgeous mahogany and teakwood fragrance. I don't pick up any lavender in that. Um, I would say that I get like a cedar musk element. Um, but yeah. <laughs> The mahogany and teakwood will fill a room too with a small candle. Um, oh, just such a great thrower in any wax that I've tried. I've made, actually I did all my testing with Soy 10, which you'll see the video uh, coming up on that soon. But I did all my testing with Soy 10 with the flaming candles, mahogany and teakwood. And um, I mean, just an excellent thrower with that wax, but it's good with pretty much everything. I've used it in so I hope that the cedar lusk the cedar musk and lavender performs the same way um, You can also use it in cold process soap with a max usage for category 9 of 14.87 percent So anyways, I think that that is all for this video before I end I do want to rank this part of the haul um, So let me just see what we have here And we're gonna be ranking what I did just in this part of the haul. So we have chestnut and birch, pipes, peak, grapefruit and mint, cedar musk and lavender, dark amber, rosewood, apple cider donut, and espresso. So I would have to say my least favorite of all of these. Um, wow. <laughs> it's really hard because none of these are really duds either. This haul and the last one from Midwest, I feel like I've had all pretty solid oils. The first one, I definitely, in my opinion, had some duds but that was just out of the bottle as well. And you know, please always do your own testing. Like I always say, these are just my opinions and um, they're just out of the bottle, first impressions. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'd have to put in my last position. Gosh, and between the Pike's Peak, well, I don't really wanna say that though. It's so hard because like, I love so many of these oils, but I guess I would have to put in last place the, um, I have to put the chestnut and birch just because it's so much like the um, French bourbon um, reserve that I love so much, but it's just lighter out of the bottle. Um, so it didn't really blow me away at all, especially after smelling that oil. Um, and then after that, I would have to put the, um, I guess I'd have to put the grapefruit and mint just because I didn't get too, too much mint out of that one. And I was really hoping to get more mint without having to blend that one. Um, love the grapefruit note in it though. Um, and then after that one, I would have to put the espresso just because to me, it smelled more like fresh coffee by Candle Science. I love it. If you can get past the name of it um, and you wanna use something that's very much like fresh coffee in cold processed soap, I would highly recommend espresso by Midwest. Um, so, and then after that one, I would have to put the dark amber, um, you know, yeah, I think I'd have to put either the Pike's Peak, well, I don't know, it, it's kind of hard uh, for this haul. I think I'm going to have to put the dark amber rosewood just, just because it, I mean, it's a beautiful oil though. I don't know. Maybe the Pike's Peak. Oh, I like that one too. Um, you know what, let's just put the cedar musk and lavender just because it's like identical in my opinion to the mahogany and teak wood from the flaming candle. Beautiful oil, but it's, you know, I feel like you can get it from multiple suppliers. Um, after that one, I guess I'm gonna have to put the, um, I guess I'm gonna have to put the dark amber rosewood. Um, I wish it were stronger out of the bottle. Um, I wish it didn't have an alcoholic component out of the bottle as much, but I really like it and I feel like that could just be because it's very concentrated. Um, in my number two position, I would have to put, um, I'd 
really, really, really have to put Pike's Peak, I guess, because the apple cider donut is just so good. Um, yeah, it's it's so nostalgic. Um, you get Macintosh apple, but you get like a spice that's not too obtrusively cinnamon. It, it's just like a perfect, like, donut. Um, it's so true to the name, and I can't believe I'm ranking that one number one, though. I feel like a lot of these were very close, and there weren't really any duds. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that that would be how I would have to rank the oils. So chestnut and birch in my last place, then grapefruit and mint, espresso, cedar, musk, and lavender, um, dark amber, rosewood, Pike's Peak, and apple cider donut. But you know, I feel like that, it just, it is kind of just the rating that I'm giving them, but I feel like they were all generally really good oils. And as I always say, the true test is when you try these out in wax, which I'm probably gonna do with a lot of these if I can get some more time to be able to <laughs> test out all these oils. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've tried any of these oils in your own candles or what your favorite scents by Midwest Fragrance Co. are, or if there are any fragrances that they have that you think I need to check out that I did not purchase in any of my three hauls. Um, don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss any updates from me. And I'm sending everyone peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making. Mm -hmm.